بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين عيطش يا زلمة انت زلمة كلنا شهداء كلنا مشاريع شهداء كلنا مشاريع شهداء قل انا لله وانا اليك راجعون اللهم اجرني في مصابتي واخلفني من خير منها سامحوا ابن عمه سامحوا ما يرضوا يا عمي شدوا حيلكم ارض جهاد هذه وارض رباط كلنا في سبيل الله احنا ليش عايشين بكره بياخذوا من ايده بخش شكل فردوس الاعلى الشهيد بتشفع على 70 واحد من اهل بيته ده سبعين واحد بتشفى كرهان مش خسارة في ربنا الله خلقنا والله بياخدنا الله يفعل ما يريد وإحنا الحمد لله صبرين صبرين ومنرضى قضاء الله والقدر ومنرضى فيه ان اعترضش على أمر الله شهيد لك انت والله ابن الكبير ابن الكبير عمره ده بالهيك صار الشب وخب والثاني ولد الله يرحمه انفاص بني انفاص قلت لها بسامحة كنت حجة بالمسامحة في نفس اليوم والله والله في نفس اليوم عمره اربع ثلاث سنين الله يصبرك الحمد لله With uh, Ummah facing back-to-back -back overlapping trials from Palestine to Syria, Bilad al-Sham overall, to Iraq, to our brothers in China, our brothers in Kashmir, in Yemen and elsewhere, it's essential to revive optimism in the hearts of the Ummah. And it's a topic many requested me to speak about. It's an essential topic because without optimism and yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during difficult times, the hearts weaken. And when the hearts weaken, the limbs weaken as well. Islam wants an energetic, upbeat ummah that never loses hope in the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam wants an upbeat ummah during times of losses and during times of victory, during times of ease, and during times of suffering. And that's one of the reasons we began the Ghurabat series. Having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being optimistic returns to the Ummah its zest and spirit and it illuminates the path for the Muslims during difficult times. It re-energizes the ummah and motivates them. The verses and hadith establishing this concept are many. You can imagine, for example, the feeling of the Sahaba after the loss in Uhud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in to feel weak and sad after that lesson in loss. He didn't want them to feel discouraged, even in those difficult times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them in that difficult time to feel confident, hopeful, and optimistic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ That's right after the battle. It was revealed right after the battle. Don't be weak, don't be sad, don't be discouraged. You're superior over them. You're supreme over them, even though they killed 70 of you. The best generation. 70 at that time were practically one tenth of the Muslim population on the face of the earth. In kuntum mu'mineen, you're superior over them. Even after the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was wounded and rumored to be killed, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa antum al-aalauna in kuntum mu'mineen, you will overcome them even after many of the Sahaba were wounded 
And even after they mocked the Sahaba, when they were told, or when they were, they were told, لَنَا الْعُزَّى وَلَا عُزَّى لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to know that they're above the disbelievers even in that difficult time, even after that loss, even after they dismembered and defaced the blessed bodies of the martyrs in that battle. رضي الله عنهم أجمعين in that most difficult, critical time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them upbeat. He wanted them confident of the path that they're on and optimistic of its future. He wanted them to know, while the loss was still fresh, that the ultimate victory in destiny is for them. وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ This is a lesson for us when we go through the same predicament. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the ummah to know that they're superior over the enemy even with losses. If they're true believers, the level of superiority is not measured by worldly, earthly losses or gains. The level of superiority is not measured by bombings and genocides or advances or retreats. The measure of superiority is the measure of one's iman and istiqamah and thabat and tawheed. It was the habitual sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, the most excellent example to follow. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا In nearly every difficult situation, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam endured, you see this lesson surface. In Hijrah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr Radiallahu Anhu were being pursued. They're lonely fugitives in a vast desert with bounties on their heads and bounty hunters chasing them. Suraqa bin Malik Radiallahu Anhu, the bounty hunter, catches up with them in the vast desert. They're practically a hand reach away from being captives. Abu Bakr radiallahu an tells the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it's over. We're about to be overtaken. But the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam is full of yaqeen and optimism. And he wants Abu Bakr siddiq radiallahu an to be optimistic in that critical moment. So he tells Abu Bakr, لا تحزن إن الله معنا Abu Bakr, don't be sad. Don't be grieved. Have no worries. Allah is with us. إن الله معنا The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua and suraqa and his horse sunk into the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr in the story that's well known. And a side issue, uh, the, the narration where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promises Suraqa radiallahu an to wear the bracelets of Kisra, that's not authentic. Now while on that same trip, they still didn't reach Medina. They're hiding in a cave when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an raises his head and he sees the feet of those pursuing them at the opening of the cave. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an tells the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, all they have to do is look down and they'll see us. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again, full of yaqeen and optimism, Comes Abu Bakr radiallahu an telling him, Abu Bakr, we are two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the third of us. Can you imagine the encouragement and the comfort, the inspiration and confidence and optimism that filled the heart of Abu Bakr radiallahu an when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, La tahsan in Allah ma'ana, or when he tells him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our third? What was the outcome? after the optimism and confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the nation that went out chasing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to kill or apprehend him gets defeated within less than two years after that incident in the battle of Badr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supreme victory and establishment over them and on the earth. In the battle of Badr. When the Muslims were outnumbered and outpowered, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted them to be optimistic. Even when it appeared that the odds were against them. Before the battle, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam begins to point to the spots where the heads of the kuffar will be killed. Why do you think he did that? To raise the morals in such a difficult time. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an and Umar radiallahu an were walking in the desert between Mecca and Medina pursuing the moon and they had a brotherly discussion. Umar radiallahu an said in the battle of Badr the messenger said هَذَا مَصْرَعُ فُلَانٍ غَدًا inshallah. This is the place where so and so will be killed tomorrow if Allah wills. Umar radiallahu an said فَوَالَّذِي بَعَثَهُ بِالْحَقِّ مَا أَخْطَأُ الْحُدُودَ الَّتِي حَدَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ By Allah, the one who sent him with the truth, they were killed in the exact spot the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم pointed to. The examples during the life of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم like this were many. But after that, Muslims passed through difficult times. Sometimes more difficult than, than what the Ummah is going through today. They evolved out of those difficulties more supreme by the will of the one who promised to protect his deen. <laughs> مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم مستهم البأساء والضراء وزلزلوا حتى يقول الرسول والذين آمنوا معه متى نصر الله ألا إن نصر الله قريب